In this video, I'm going to show you the best ARC single player settings to enjoy and beat the game. All right, so let's get into it. So to host a local, we're going to make a single player settings over here. So I highly recommend clicking the restore default settings button here. And then we're going to be changing the specific ones that I mentioned. A lot of them are still on default, but there's some that I've changed to make the experience a whole lot more faster so that you don't spend too much time just, you know, struggling for long. If you like a nice casual playthrough, but it doesn't take forever, this should take you between 50 to 100 hours to beat most bosses on all the maps, provided if you're just playing as a casual play style if you're like an expert you can probably do it a lot faster you can also change these settings to what you desire and adapt them to how you want to play so starting off our difficulty level is set to one our xp multiplier is set to five our taming speed is set to four our dino harvesting damage is set to five harvest amount is set to eight dino character food drain is set to two player harvesting damage is set to four and then if we look at all these checked items over here, I'm just going to do it like this so that the allow third person cameras at the top, you can make sure you've checked the right ones over here. Um, I think by default, PVE mode is turned off. So make sure you turn that on. Show map player location. That's nice to see yourself on the map when you're looking at the map. So I'd recommend having this one checked. Maximum difficulty, you should have this one checked. Now, disable structure placement collision. This allows you to like build into the structures that clip into terrain. So like if you have a foundation and it kind of goes into the side of a mountain, normally you wouldn't be able to place it. If you have this checked, you'll be able to build into places that you wouldn't normally be able to build because they clip into things. However, you still cannot build in like caves and artifact caves and stuff like that. There is a different setting for that. So this one I actually like to use because I like to you know build how I want to build instead of the environment stopping me. Allow unlimited respects. I recommend checking that one. And allow flyer leveling speed. This is up to you whether you want to do it or not. So let's go to advanced. So that was quite simple, right? So the next one here, you can see the only thing ticked out of these all over here is the allow tribe war. But it, honestly, it doesn't matter because we're on single player. Um, those settings we haven't changed. These ones we have not changed. So looking at the world settings over here, we have changed a bunch of these things here. I've experimented to try find the best times that aren't too cheesy, but also kind of cater for a single player experience because we're not on a server where things are happening while you're actually sleeping in real life. Everything happens while you're actually in the game. So you got to make things faster to kind of allow for that. The poop interval, however, has not been changed. You can adjust this if you need so. Um, lay egg interval, I've set to 0.5. Mating interval set to 0 0.15. So this allows you to actually mate your dinosaurs. Max level T-Rexes, for example, every hour, I believe. It's just over an hour, if I recall. Um, egg hatch speed, five. This allows those eggs to hatch in about seven, seven minutes, I think. Baby mature speed is set to five. Now this seems quick. You're gonna you're gonna think it's like the seven minutes from the egg hatch speed. Now this one I don't recommend changing because this thing messes up a lot with the imprinting stuff. So I actually set five because it's a reasonable slow pace kind of thing. You already have the baby. You already have false breeding. You just have to wait for the baby to grow up, and I believe it takes around a thousand minutes or so. I mean seconds, <laughs> a thousand seconds or so which isn't too bad. So, and it also allows your, your dinosaur to, to be imprinted at the correct values at the correct times so that it doesn't break the whole game because trying to line up with imprints is very difficult with these settings. Harvest health set to 10. Resources respawn period set to 0 0.6. This is supposed to make resources respawn more often. So if you like mining metal, it will respawn uh, a lot quicker. Baby cuddle interval multiplier 0 0.1. This actually allows you to imprint, I think, every eight minutes or so. And it should give you around 33%. At least that's what I had in my experience. It might be different for you. I'm not sure. However, I am using a mod that uh, has the nanny. So that kind of imprints everything. Otherwise, you might just use a Maywing or something else that imprints if it's not not working correctly. Um, these settings are always very finicky in that way. Baby cuddle lose imprint quality speed multiplier. That is a word and a half. 0 0.1. Now the baby imprinting stat scale multiplier affects the strength of a dino that's been imprinted. By default, this is one. Now you can use that because 1.2 is a little bit of a cheat because I'm making it a bit stronger than they normally would be. So in a sense, I'm kind of giving them like extra, you know, stats that make them stronger so that I don't have to mutate them as much in, in a single player experience. I don't have to sit around for mutations as, as long. I can actually just have them be decently strong, just get a few mutations. As long as I tame them at a high level with good stats, 
they're usually fine to take into boss fights and everything, as long as that you've made the babies, you've imprinted them and everything, which is a whole kind of chore of its own. The day cycle speed, you can have this set to one if you want. I believe it takes 30 minutes in day, 30 minutes at night. I set this to two, so this actually makes it take, you know, 15 minutes in day, 15 minutes in night. Scrolling down, we haven't changed the spoiling time, the item of decomposition time hasn't been changed, and the crop growth speed is set to five so that they can grow quite quickly. I like my crops to grow fast. The wild dino stats per level has not been affected. Tamed dino stats per level has been affected. I've increased the HP a little bit, as well as the damage just a little bit as well, so that they just have a teensy little bit more of HP and a teensy little bit more of damage so that they're not so weak. Same for the tame dinos add per level. You can see here health and damage has been changed, I believe. I'm not sure about the health, but I think the damage has definitely been adjusted there. And then the tamed dinos affinity stats or stats affinity has been changed for health and damage as well. So this is all to just make the damage and the health a little higher so that you don't have to spend too much time getting insane mutations, trying to hope for the best luck just to get better HP and, and melee. You might still need mutations for alpha bosses, but you won't need as many with these kind of settings over here. Player stats per level has not been changed. Experience multipliers has not been changed. You can change these if you want to get more experience from different things. The final settings over here, as you can see, the only major thing I've changed here is to show floating damage text if you want to see the numbers when you do damage. Now, if you want, you can also have the passive defenses hurt riderless dinos, right? So you can actually put this on if you want. Uh, it's, it's up to you whether you want your defenses to hurt dinos. The problem with this is if they get hurt from it, they start attacking, right? Or they run away, and this happens for passive dinos as well. Uh, so it's a bit of a, like, whatever kind of situation you want. I actually prefer to have it off so that things aren't just randomly attacking my base like a Bronto standing on the spikes and deciding to, to one-shot my base, which, which usually sucks. Scrolling down here, um, we have the supply crate loot quality and the fishing loot quality set to five for each of them because, you know, like if I'm going to be fishing or searching for crates, I, I want some good stuff. And, and Ark is known to give you some garbage loot in a lot of those loot crates unless you're going into the deep ocean and stuff. And when you are, you kind of want the good stuff anyway. So that those are the settings I'm actually using to have have a good, enjoyable experience to beat the game, you know, without spending too much time just grinding and doing things that aren't really enjoyable for most players. I hope these settings helped you, and thank you so much for watching this video.